Interpreting Malachi 3.10 Imagine a boat captain on the high seas. He has a large magnificent ship with imposing sails and he has his crew on board. However, the captain is torn between two directions, going in search of unknown lands to share wealth with other people, or returning home to carry out the necessary maintenance on the ship. The captain feels the call of the unknown, of the distant lands where he could make a difference. He imagines the smiles on the faces of the people he could help, the hope he could bring. However, reality pulls him back to the needs of keeping his ship functional. Sales need to be repaired. Supplies need to be replenished, among many other demands, like the captain. Ministers in large churches face similar anguish. They look beyond the walls of the church and know there is a world that needs to hear the gospel. However, just like the ship, the churches with their temples, which are often sumptuous, also require constant care. Unfortunately, the gospel is imprisoned by demands that are very far from the kingdom of God. Before worrying about preaching a simple, objective, biblical and saving message. Ministers need to work hard with their sermons to guarantee the expenses of these true money-consuming machines. I remember that in 2019, I visited a city and went to contemplate the beauty and sumptuousness of a temple that hosted meetings of a huge group of people called the Church of Christ. During my observations, I came across a folder of the institution's accounts. It was detailed. Thousands for the maintenance of the temple, such as taxes, water, electricity, internet, telephone, janitorial, fuel, travel, salaries, comfort and well-being of its leaders and so many other expenses of this material life, you may ask, yes, and what's wrong with that? Well, as we are talking about an institution that claims to be the body of Christ and obeys his commandments, the problem is that for the essentials of this living organism, which is expanding the kingdom of God with the proclamation of the gospel, there was no discriminated value. To fill the house with food and feed the hungry, nothing either. Expenses for missionaries who are sowing the gospel, also nothing. Are these priorities of the head, Jesus Christ, or of men? Let's let the scriptures answer for us. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and I will always be with you, until the end of time. Matthew 28. 19 to 20. Religion that is pure and undefiled before our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. James 1.7. Well, given the above, it is no wonder that clerics will create different strategies and doctrines to guarantee the financial flow of their machines. Once done, they will look for biblical passages that can support their ideas. Note carefully, they do not extract doctrines from the scriptures. They create them in their minds and then turn to the Bible trying to justify them. Among the many created, we find the doctrine of tithing based on the passage from the Holy Book of Wallachi 3 and 10. Once again, I draw your attention. They do not work on the doctrine throughout Scripture as we have done in these studies, but rather a single passage that in their understanding is favorable to them. I will come near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers and against adulterers and against those who swear falsely and against those who defraud the wages of the day labor, and oppress the widow and the orphan, and distort the rights of the stranger, and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts, for I, the Lord, do not change, therefore, you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed, since the days of your fathers you have turned away from my statutes and have not kept them, return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts, but you say, what shall we return to, will man rob God? Yet you rob me and say, What have we robbed you of? In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, because you, the whole nation, rob me. Bring all the tithes to the treasury, so that there may be food in my house, and test me in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I do not open the windows of heaven for you and pour out upon you a blessing without measure, for your sake I will rebuke the devourer, so that he does not consume your fruit from the ground. Your vine in the field will not be barren, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations will call you happy, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Malachi 3.5-12 Malachi's prophecies were given to Jews repatriated from captivity already established in the promised land. The walls were built, the temple rebuilt and the religious system functioning. However, those Jews faced adversity and spiritual decline. They had become cynical and questioned God's justice, doubting the benefit of obeying His commandments 
As their faith waned, they became mechanical and insensitive in their observance of divine worship, and indifferent to the demands of the law. Then God raises up this prophet to confront them and call them to repent of their sins and religious hypocrisy. It is interesting to note that the main targets of his exhortations are the priests, who were sacrificing. Yes, but they were sacrificing sick, blind and lame animals. Those priests disrespected the law, made indifferent offers and then said, What's the matter? As I said, these prophecies were directed to the ancient nation of Israel under the Mosaic law, that is, it was governed by the law as we are today governed by the federal constitution. God's people were withholding their tithes and offerings, that is, their taxes. Now dear brother, consider what would happen if Brazilians or any citizen of another country refused to pay their taxes. The law would classify this as theft. Those found guilty would be punished for stealing from the government. Likewise, when Israel withheld its tithes, taxes, it was robbing God as it was he who had instituted the tithe system. Then the Lord ordered his people to bring their tithes to the saddleback. The context of this prophecy, specifically in verse 5, the Lord says that he will judge those who oppress widows, the destitute, and foreigners. These were worthy recipients of the tithe. And by withholding them, Israel was guilty of oppressing them. This is where the heart of God is in the prophecies of Malachi 3. The oppression of the poor. Is it strange to say the least that we don't hear clergymen emphasize this point, pounding our ears with the passage from Malachi 3 without even mentioning what is really at issue. In the passage, some may say that it does this with tithes, this is still not correct, as the primary obligation for this falls on the state, which collects all taxes precisely to meet the needs of its people, something that did not exist in the past. The commandment falls to the church, to those who believe in faith. In the bestseller God's Financial Plan by Norman Robertson we find the sacred pearl of the defenders of mandatory tithing under the aegis of Malachi. Every Christian who is not honoring God with his tie is guilty of robbing him. He is living under a curse and will be in financial bondage until he obeys God's word and begins to tithe. Tithing breaks the curse. Statements like this only serve to confuse the Lord's church. They mix law with grace. The word of God assures us that all the curse that was upon us was taken by Christ on the cross of Calvary. All those who do the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one who does not continue in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. And it is evident that by the law no one will be justified before God, because the righteous will live by faith. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Galatians 3.102.13 I ask, isn't Christ's sacrifice enough? Isn't it full? Did Christ remove all curses except the curse listed in Malachi 3 and 10? Absolutely. Being redeemed from the curse of the law means being freed from following its rules and regulations and experiencing God's judgment. Jesus Christ is our Redeemer. Becoming a curse for us and rescuing us from slavery through His death on the cross.